Hey, welcome to Electron Online. In our next example here, we're going to tie the parametric equations concept in with polar coordinates. And what we're going to do here is we're going to simulate circular motion by setting the two equations, x equals cosine of t and y equals sine of t equal to, of course, x and y are not going to be functions of they're going to be trigonometric functions, both depending upon a third parameter t. So that's why we call them parametric equations. t needs to be greater than or equal to zero. So let again, time, t could be representative of time. If we plug in different values for t, we'll get corresponding values for x and corresponding values for y. Since x is a cosine of t and y is a sine of t, you can see that when t is equal to zero, x is equal to one, y equals zero. When t equals pi over four, then x will be the square root of 2 over 2, and so will y be the square root of 2 over 2. When it's pi over 2 or 90 degrees, x is going to be equal to 0, y is going to be equal to 1, and then if it's equal to pi, of course, these are radians. Radians are non-units, so we can assume they're probably seconds. So pi seconds, x will be negative 1, y will be 0. At 3 pi over 2, which is down at the bottom of the circle, x will be 0, y is negative 1, and when we get to 2 pi, again, we'll get 1 and 0. So what does that look like? Again, We'll go ahead and draw this on a polar coordinate system. So we have the horizontal axis. When t is equal to 0, x is 1, y is 0. So this would be 1 and 0. So that means r is 1, and uh, x is 1, and y is 0. So that would be this point right there, and that would be point number 1. So we'll go ahead and number them again. So this would be the point 1, 0. The next point would be square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. So that would be about here. So it would be the square root of 2, square root of 2 for the xy coordinates. That's point number 2. Point number 3, x will be 0, y will be 1. So that would be right about there. That would be 0, 1, and that would be point number 3. Point number 4 can be made at minus 1, 0. That would be right over here somewhere. Point number 4, negative 1, 0. That would be point number 4. Point number 5 will be down here at 0, negative 1. 0, negative 1, that would be point number 5. And then point number 6, we're back over here, that would be 1, 0, that would be point number 6. And you can see when you connect all those dots, you have what we'd call circular motion. Why we call it circular motion? Because as time goes by, the, if this represents the position of a particle, you can see that the particle will simply continue to move around in a circle, circular path like this, as time goes by. So that's why we call this circular motion instead of simply a circle. We can see that as time goes by, that the particle will be in different positions along that circular path. So that is how we use parametric equations for circular motion.